Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. Following my contract series, I think it's time to switch to another format. I call the new series the Internal Style Concept Series. Contrary to prior series, I will focus on some important topics commonly used in all the three internal styles. In teaching, one should apply different formats in transferring knowledge. Just like observing a subject, one should try to do it from different angles in order to have a better picture of it. So, I believe by switching to this format, your understanding of the three internal styles will deepen with time. Also, I already have quite a few ideas for potential topics in this new video series. However, if you think that some topics are worth of discussion, please let me know by writing them down in the comments section. I will take them into consideration. As I said before, I intend to build a community with constructive discussion rather than just a one-way lecture delivery channel. A couple of weeks ago, I just finished my summer vacation and started working on different tasks besides martial art. No matter how busy my schedule is, I will do my best to keep working on this project. I'm sure you will like this new series. Topic covered in this video include First, Liu He and its root. Second, Liu He in martial art. Third, key principle of Liu He. Fourth, demonstration. Fifth, take aways. So, let's get started. Topic 1 Liu He and its root. First, let me talk about Zhuangzi. Zhuangzi, often known outside China as Master Zhuang, is an important figure in the history of Taoism. He lived around the late 4th century BCE. He is considered as a pivotal figure in classical philosophical Taoism due to his contribution. His literary work, known by his own name, the Zhuangzi, is one of the most important fundamental documents of Taoism. In his book, he was the first person who called the term Liu He. So, what is Liu He? In Chinese, Liu means six, He means direction. Together, Liu He means six directions, including upward, downward, left, right, front and back. So, in ancient China, the term Liu He used to mean the universe or the infinite space. Now, let's go back to Zhuangzi's text about Liu He. Zhuangzi said, Liu He zhi wai, sheng ren cun er bu lun. Liu He zhi nei, sheng ren yi lun er bu yi. They, they translate to, outside of the sixth direction, the sage abides in non-discussion. Within the sixth direction, the sage discourses without debates. Here, Zhuangzi made his philosophical statement about his attitude toward knowledge. Even though we should try to understand the universe without being judgmental. We can discuss things with an open mind, but we should be careful not to jump to conclusions. Later on, about 1000 years ago, this term was adopted in Chinese fortune telling. For example, most of you are aware of that the Chinese zodiac is based on the 12 animal signs. They are right, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, sheep, monkey, rooster, dog, and pig. Many people believe that certain pairs of animal signs are romantically compatible. 
the term used to describe this relation or situation is he, which means suitable or harmonic. For example, red is he with horse, tiger is he with pig, rabbit is he with dog, dragon is he with rooster, snake is he with monkey, and horse is he with sheep. So, in total, there are six pairs of animal harmonic or compatible signs according to Liu He. Following this, the meaning of Liu He or six directions became six harmonies. Think about it. Six harmonies. What a wonderful term. Since the term Liu He has such a, such a positive meaning, it's not that hard to imagine that people in, in other fields would use this term. Anyway, to summarize, originally, Liu He literally meant six directions and implied the entire universe. Later, this term was used by other practices such as the Chinese zodiac, Feng Shui, fortune telling, among others, and it required the new meaning of six harmonies. Topic 2 Liu He in Martial Arts. After watching Topic 1, I think you may have figured out the possibility that Liu He must have been adopted by the martial art community as well. If so, you are right. I introduced an important Chinese martial art classic document in a prior video, which is the famous Jiu Yao Lun, or Nine Important Discussions. It is the document originally used to guide Xin Yi practice. Regarding the author of this document, some people, some people attribute it to General Yue Fei, one of the Chinese national heroes. Yue Fei lived from 1103 to 1142 CE. Like I said before, many martial art styles attribute Yue Fei as their founder, an example of cultural utopianism. It is absolutely impossible since he only lived for 39 years, and furthermore, as the top military commander of the Song Dynasty, he just could not have had the time to create any of those martial art styles. It's just a cultural phenomenon. Also, there's a lot of scholarly research which suggests that the document Jiu Yao Lun was written only about 500 years ago. In the sixth part of this document, the term Liu He is discussed. By the way, when I was in China, I never got the opportunity to read any martial art books written in English. After moving to the West, I started reading some martial art books in English. Although the word I'm using here is read, actually, I only quickly scan them because sometimes my students would ask my opinion about them and I have to scan it quickly so that I can share my opinion with them. There are only chances that I read English martial art books. I cannot recall when I first read the term Liu He as Six Harmonies in a martial art context. I thought it was okay at first since the term sounded beautiful. Then, with time, I realized that the term says harmonies is not that correct nor precise translation if it is used in the martial art community. I prefer to translate the word he into coordinate. I would like to elaborate on it now. According to this document, there are six inner coordinations and three outer coordinations. In total, it comes up to six coordinations. The three inner coordinations include mind coordinates with 
intention. Intention coordinates with energy. Energy coordinates with force. The six X outer coordinations include the hand coordinates with the foot, the elbow coordinates with the knee, the shoulder coordinates with the hip. Also, the left hand coordinates with the right foot, the left elbow coordinates with the right knee, the left shoulder coordinates with the right hip, and the similar coordinations for the opposite parts. Furthermore, the head coordinates with the hand, the hand coordinates with the body, the body coordinates with the stepping. There are outer coordinations. There are many more types of coordination possible, but I will not list them all in the interest of time. So, if we use the term Liu He in the martial art context, I think the better translation would be six coordination instead of six harmony. I hope this translation catches on at least in the internal style community. To summarize, Liu He was a term first used in Zhuang Zi's book to describe the universe. Later on, Liu He became the sixth harmony used in the Chinese zodiac Feng Shui and Fortune Telling, and eventually it was adopted by the martial art community. The martial art community also largely used the translation Six Harmonies, the same term used in fortune telling. I prefer to translate to Six Coordinations since martial art has nothing to do with Feng Shui or fortune telling. I firmly believe we should use accurate terminology to describe concept and not stick with the original term if the field of the origin of the term has nothing to do with martial arts. Please keep watching, and I guarantee you that after watching the whole video, you would understand this term better. Topic 3 Key Principle of Liu He I have translated the original meaning of this term, Liu He, but how to apply it in martial art practice? Of course, everyone wants to have this coordination or harmony in case you still prefer the old translation. Unfortunately, how to practice Liu He was not mentioned in that document, and for the last couple of the centuries, there haven't been a lot of documents explaining this term. Very often, a teacher just asks to pay attention to the coordination, that's it. This is why I think it's time for me to introduce some key principles of Liu He. Before we go into details, let me first define the term coordination in the martial context. Coordination is the synchronization between different body parts, breathing, intention, and senses to optimize the martial effect. After years of teaching, I created six sentences in three pairs, or three proverbs. Again, let me read them in Mandarin first, then in English. In Mandarin, 一念之言,全身同动,行开一合,合后同行,眼神呼吸,尽力为先. In English, mind leads all the movement, and the entire body is coordinated. Second, mentally moving together, even though physically separated. Moving together after being connected. 3. Pay attention to the sight and the breathing. Coordination is about force and power. Now, let me explain them to you. First, mind leads all the movement, and each part of the body coordinates to each other. 
in martial art practice. The first thing when talking about coordination is not the physical part of our body. Instead, it is the mind. At first, our mind should lead all the movements. If one focuses on physical coordination instead of paying attention to the fact that the movement should be led by our mind, that is not the real coordination. Then, in practice, is partially the internal style of practice. When one part moves and all the other parts of our body follows. For example, in Tai Chi, when the legs move upward, the body sinks downward. In Xing Yi, when the fist extends forward, usually our body slightly sinks downward. In Ba Gua, when walking on a circle, our arms make small adjustments as well. Again, these physical coordinations should be done under the coordination between our mind and our body. Second, mentally moving together even though physically separated. Moving together after being connected. In many movements, two parts may be separated physically but they are connected mentally. For example, consider Lan Zhai O lazily tying the coat. Initially, the hands are in an opening posture, although the hands may be physically separated, but mentally it would seem as if there is a thread connecting the weights together. In Lan Zhai, there is the posture, like this. Hands are separated physically, but imagine they are connected. Okay. So, from here. In Xing Yi, for example, Pao Quan or the fire fist. It seems as if the front fist and the back fist are connected when punching, and the force of the front fist is sent by the movement of the back fist. So, at this movement, this movement, punch with the front fist, but the force from the back fist. Okay, so this motion. Next, when the hand connect together, they will coordinate by moving together as a single unit. Let's take the same Tai Chi movement, the Liu Feng Si Bi, as an example to explain it. After the arms are connected together, the movements of the arm become one. They move together as long as the connection is maintained. So, this, this posture. So, connect to each other, keep pushing, then together. In Xing Yi hog form, the arms move together before punching. This movement. So, one, two. So, the fist, the arm, move to together. <coughs> then 3. Pay attention to, to the side and the breathing. Coordination is about force and power. It's a very important aspect in martial art practice. I believe that the direction and the intensity of your gaze or sight is so important in martial art practice that I consider it to be a core aspect of coordination. In my prior video on common mistake in Tai Chi, I introduced that your vision should focus on the opponent and not at all on your own hands. For example, in the Lan Zha Yi movement, your hand moves backward 
and you look forward instead of your sight following the movement of your hands. This part. Look at the other direction. Palms move backward. Then push. Then here. Also, the intensity of your gaze will alternate during practice. For example, during Faji movement, you should be slightly intensified as well since vision and sight should reflect the mind. As for breathing, it should coordinate with the movement, not the other way around. In internal martial arts, we use breathing to strengthen our force and power, so it should be coordinated to other elements of a movement. In the end, we have to know that a higher level of coordination involves different forces and power, not the physical part of the body. It is a deep topic and I will explain it in more detail in the future. By the way, as for vision and sight, it is something that people ironically overlook very often. You may have noticed often that someone can demonstrate a movement very well, but it lacks spirit. This kind of spiritless demonstration is caused by a lack of coordination. So, I highly recommend you pay special attention to the coordination between vision and movements and you will notice your martial spirit in the form. I believe that these three proverbs about coordination in martial art practice are important. I hope you will try to apply these principles to your own practice. Of course, easier said than done, but I'm sure with sufficient time and practice, you will master them very well. Please remember, principles can be taught, but internalization of those principles can only be achieved with practice. Topic 4 Demonstration Liu He, or Sith Coordination, is an important concept in practice. I'd like to demonstrate it with one of the Chen style Tai Chi movement. The name of the movement is Yan Shou Hong Chui, or covering hands and striking with a fist. I will use part of this movement to demonstrate the Liu He concept. Please pay attention to the intention, breathing, vision, angles, chest opening and closing, body rotation, and the strength of each part of the body. In Yan Shou Hong Chui, this place, so, one, extend, forward, Inhale, then exhale. Topic 5 Take Aways. This was my first of hopefully many videos in the new format of presenting an internal style concept. Some topics have been covered here. The history of the term Liu He and its evolution, from six directions representing the universe to six harmonies used in other fields to martial art. I prefer to translate it to six coordinations in the context of martial art training. Some guiding principles of the six coordination have been explained. A Tai Chi demonstration that clearly shows an example of such coordination has been introduced. That's end today's video. Thanks for watching, see you next time and enjoy your practice.